Welcome to the Academy, a series focused on the basics of Star Wars The Old Republic. Before you jump into group content, it's important to prepare your character and learn about group etiquette. The group finder in Star Wars The Old Republic is the easiest way to find other players to do group content with, but if you aren't aware of how to work well with your other three random group members, you're in for a rude surprise. In this video, I'll be going over everything you should know before grouping up with other random players for flashpoints. The first thing you need to know about group flashpoints is that you'll be playing with three real random people, each one with their own specific goals and reasons for wanting to run the flashpoint. Part of being a good group member is being willing to compromise. The ultimate goal for all of you should be to finish the flashpoint. How you go about that depends on what the majority of the group wants. For example, as a first timer, your goals might be to see the story, while a veteran player may have played it 8 times already and wants you to skip past the cutscene so they can get it done quickly for the weekly rewards. There's no right or wrong way in the end, but if you have very strong opinions about your goals like wanting to do it at super speed or wanting to take your time and explore, you should not be using the group finder. Instead, you should be using chat to find like-minded individuals who want to run it the same way as you. If this is your first time, here's the type of message you'll want to post in general chat of the fleet. New level so-and-so player looking to run the so-and-so flashpoint with other players who want to see the story. If you're doing that, here's an extra tip. There's an even easier solo version for a lot of the flashpoints that you can do alone or walk into with friends you meet in chat that can't be accessed through the group finder. If possible, I would definitely recommend your first flashpoint be run this way or with friends. Here's a list of the flashpoints that can be run solo versus through the group finder. The ones on the left have a solo mode available, while the ones on the right can be run through the group finder, while some can only be run by groups of players and have no solo mode available at all. Before actually queuing up, there's some things you should do to prepare. Because you are one fourth of a team, you should be able to pull your weight and not force your team to carry you. You don't need to have epic gear, memorize the fights, or be the number one player in the game, but you do need to have a basic grasp of the types of things a good group member should do. The first important thing is to look at your gear. The group finder for veteran mode has a fantastic feature. No matter your level, no matter your gear, using the group finder to join a flashpoint will temporarily bolster your gear to give it the aspects of a decent max level set of gear. This special bolster has its limitations though. You must have a piece of gear in every slot in your equipment panel, and each piece of gear must have stats. There are many armors in the game that are cosmetic only. They are empty shells with no stats attached to them. Before jumping into the group finder, you can get some basic gear and stats on the fleet. Look for the adaptive vendor and the modification vendors around the outer edge of the supply section of the fleet. You can add the stats items like mods, enhancements, and armorings to your gear by control right clicking the empty gear shells you buy from the adaptive vendor. Characters missing pieces of equipment or characters wearing cosmetic armor with no stats will not get bolstered. If your teammates see you aren't wearing the correct gear, there's a good chance they may vote to kick you out of the flashpoint for not doing the minimal required in gearing up for group flashpoints. The second important thing to know is your character. Each class, advanced class, and combat proficiency has its own moves. Some are key parts of your ability to do damage, while others look cool but are intended for a different specialization. Other moves are universal but are named differently between each class, but are extremely useful to know about, like your defensive abilities, your stuns, your interrupt, and your stun breaker. Each class has these, and they can be key parts of getting out of rough situations. The easiest way to learn about what your class has is by opening your abilities window and reading through each ability you have for your class and advanced class. Most classes have multiple defensive abilities, which can either protect you or heal you, and help keep you alive if your health is going down rapidly. Stuns can help keep enemies from attacking for a while, which helps keep your team alive longer. Interrupts can help interrupt enemies as they are readying attacks and can reduce the damage your group takes. Lastly, your stun breaker will free you if you are stunned or frozen in place. All of these abilities should be made easily available to you by being visible on your quick bars. If you want to become a great player, you can also key bind these abilities for faster access during emergency situations. One way or another, to be respectful of your group, you should have a basic understanding of your character and how to play your class. You don't have to be the best player at that class. 
but you should be familiar with how their most important moves work. Once you've got your character ready, you can enter the group finder. Personally, I don't recommend entering until you reach level 25-ish, even though you can jump in as early as level 15, because although you will be bolstered to max level temporarily, you won't have some of the key abilities that help keep you alive and do more damage quite yet. To enter the group finder, first click the symbol of three little people near your minimap, which will open the activities window. You'll want to be on the group tab for group flashpoints. Before you do anything else, there's an extremely important setting called Group Roll. Make sure this is set to just damage and make sure it is not on healer or tank. This helps your teammates know you're not ready yet to take on the more involved roles. If you're max level, I actually do recommend checking both veteran flashpoints and story uprisings. Uprisings are mini flashpoints with no cutscenes. They're actually an easy way to jump in and the veteran modes aren't actually too bad. Make sure you do not have operations or master flashpoints checked. When the group finder was first released, most of the flashpoints had roughly the same skill level. Since then though, many flashpoints have been released that have the same veteran or master mode rating, but are incredibly difficult compared to the other flashpoints with the same rating. There are a few flashpoints where players will often outright quit or kick you out if they're placed with low level members during these flashpoints, as they are ridiculously different to do and very difficult even with a full max level group. If this happens, either your group kicks you out or your group quits, don't be offended. It's actually the game's fault for throwing new and low level players into these more difficult flashpoints. Just queue up again and hope for better luck the next time. For your first flashpoint, I actually recommend filtering the flashpoints list. This will help your luck in having a good first group finder flashpoint. To filter which flashpoint you might get, click filter on the bottom right. What flashpoints you see on the screen will vary depending on your level and what expansions you have unlocked. These are the ones I recommend unchecking, as they have a higher difficulty level. On this screen, there's also an option that allows you to join in-progress groups who lost a player along the way. I don't recommend having this checked so you can see the flashpoint from the beginning. Keep in mind, filtering the flashpoints will make you ineligible for the daily rewards, but is a much smarter way to queue for your first few times. Once you're ready, join the queue! One of the things that can make grouping up more enjoyable is communication. If this is your first flashpoint, tell your group in chat. If this is your first time in a specific flashpoint, tell your group in chat. Although some players will be unwilling to compromise, others are just excited to run with other players and are happy to give advice and help. Players who are willing to communicate and ask questions are almost always given more leniency when something goes wrong. If another player in my group doesn't communicate, I assume they're living in their own little world and aren't interested in working together to fix whatever problems caused us to fail. <laughs> if your account is unable to type in chat, you can still indicate you're present and listening by typing slash yes and slash no or just type slash wave to say hi. Some other things you will want to communicate is if you're stepping away from the computer for a moment or if you're running into issues. Speaking of issues, try and make sure to take care of any chores or tasks you need to do before entering the group finder. It's considered very rude to step away from the computer for more than a minute or two, as your group often may have to sit there and do nothing while waiting for you. If you have some extra words to spare, a round of congratulations or compliments after a difficult fight goes a long way, as well as a thank you to your group when you're done. One of the most common mechanics in Star Wars The Old Republic is fondly known as bad stuff. Bad stuff is any effect that can be seen on the ground that will cause your character damage when you're standing in it. These most often appear as yellow, orange, or red circles or triangles, which you should keep your eyes open for. The more often you stand in them, the more likely you'll die and let your team down. On top of the bad stuff, some flashpoint bosses have their own special mechanics you need to watch out for. Some flashpoints don't have any interesting mechanics, while others force you to learn the mechanics or automatically fail the fight. For example, in the Aethys flashpoint when fighting in the tomb of Vodal Crush, during the fight you might see balls of fire suddenly starting to chase you. If you don't run away from them, you'll take a lot of damage and might die. You don't necessarily need to memorize or look up these mechanics, though of course it helps, but you do need to listen to any advice your group gives and keep your eyes open during the fight. It's pretty common to die quite a few times, but if you aren't willing to communicate and learn from your mistakes, your group might get frustrated and leave. If there's a more experienced player in your group, it's best to follow their lead. If one of your group members is a tank, you should always allow them to attack enemies first. Rushing into fights is one of the most frustrating new player mistakes for your team members. 
The tank is usually waiting until everyone is ready and healed up, and then goes first to help the group take the least amount of damage. If you jump in first, every enemy will be attacking you, and you don't have that sweet, sweet defensive gear and stats your tank should have. To help your group even more in non-boss fights, attack the enemy your tank is attacking. Your tank will distract that enemy while you take it down. Many experienced players also have tips and tricks to sneak around enemies. Even if you would prefer to fight those enemies, it's better to compromise and work with your group to sneak if that's what they want to do. Keep an eye on your teammates. If they're hugging the wall and turning tight corners, follow in their footsteps to learn a sneaky shortcut. If you have a stealth class in your group, they may also put enemies to sleep so you can sneak past them. Don't wake those sleeping enemies up and once again, follow the leader. When in doubt, ask in chat. When you defeat a boss, sometimes there's loot dedicated to your character, while other times there's loot that one player will randomly win. This random gear often shows up in a Need, Greed, Pass pop-up box. The opinion of which of these you should choose varies, but the most important thing to know is that you should never greed or need on a piece of gear you can't currently use on your character. For example, if a helmet drops and your current helmet is better, select Pass so another group member can get a chance to upgrade their gear. Other players recommend only clicking Need until you win a piece of gear then selecting Greed or Pass to allow your other members to win. This is up to the group. Once again, communication is key. For example, when I run flashpoints, I'm often doing them for fun or to see the story, and I don't need any of the loot. So if my other group members are trying to be polite and also pass on the gear, I might wind up with it and it's a total waste of a piece of gear. Once again, communication is wonderful. Apart from using your defensive and healing abilities to keep yourself alive, most veteran mode group flashpoints also have healing Kulto tanks. These look like glowing blue boxes present during boss fights, there is usually four available. These are one use healing items that will give a large amount of health to the person who clicks them and a small boost in health to everyone in the group. When exactly to use them is a bit of an art, but in general, if you are a ranged player, you can park yourself down beside one and keep your eyes open for a good opportunity to use them to heal your group. Either way, don't click the shiny blue thing until there's an emergency, or your group will be very disappointed that you wasted the healing tool because you accidentally thought it was a lore object. Between preparing your character and knowing about some basic group etiquette, I think that's everything you should need to jump into group flashpoints. Personally, I find group content to be the most fun and the most exciting content available in the game, and flashpoints are the perfect way to start getting into that. If you want to show your support for this series, or to have similar Star Wars The Old Republic videos show up on your YouTube homepage, subscribe to this channel. And feel free to leave a comment below whether you're a veteran player who wants to share some tips or a newbie who wants to ask some questions. May the Force be with you.